Coming up, a smart watch, a smart phone, and a remote control that's bigger than your phone. It's all coming up next on Before You Buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is is Twit. Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage using your own computer and printer whenever you need it. You'll never have to go to the post office again. For my special $110 bonus offer, go to Stamps.com today and use the promo code Before You Buy. It's Leo Laporte here with Before You Buy, Twit's product review show that enlists the entire Twit staff to review products. And we've got some really interesting ones. This Sony smartwatch. Uh, this this is actually, I'm excited about this. I thought it was a phone. It's not. It looks like a Samsung smartphone. It's everything but the phone. It's called the smart player. We also have this. What the heck could that be? We'll explain all in just a bit. But let's start things off. With a look at the Sony smartwatch, our very own Nicole Lee has the review. Nicole? I'm Nicole Lee from Twit and Before You Buy, and I'm reviewing the Sony smartwatch Android-powered accessory. Now, this watch works via Bluetooth 3.0 with any Android-powered smartphone as long as they're 2.1 and up. Um, However, it works best with Xperia smartphones. So Sony did provide me this little Walkman Xperia phone here, and it will work automatically with this phone because it comes with the liveware application already preloaded. If you want to use this watch with any other um, Android device that's not Sony, you do have to download the Liveware app, which is free from the uh, Google Play Store. Now this Sony smartwatch, as you can see here, comes with this uh, rubberized wristband. It comes with black as the default color, but as you can see, it comes in pink, as well as white, mint, gray, and blue. Um, Another really handy thing about the Sony smartwatch is that um, it can clip out. There's a little clip on the back here, so you can clip it to your clothes or to your um, sleeves as you're running about. Now this tiny little smartwatch here has a 1.3 inch OLED touch screen. There are two different main views to the Sony smartwatch. To navigate through the phone, uh, what you do is with the widget screen, you essentially swipe left and right to go through the different widgets. To switch from the widget screen to the application screen, you have to flick up and down. Once you're in an application, for example, you can just tap the widget or the app to get into the application on your smartwatch. Um, you, have to, you have to essentially pinch in to get out of it. I found the pinching action in a small little screen like this a little bit difficult, but I suppose you can get used to it after a while. Now, as I mentioned, there are all these applications and apps on the Sony smartwatch. However, you do need the live wear application on your phone to make them work. In fact, there are no real applications stored on the watch itself. You essentially manage everything through your phone. So the music player is not on the watch, it's on the phone. Uh, The Twitter app is not on the watch, it's on the phone. So it's basically an accessory, not really a device onto itself. Um, Other functions of the Sony smartwatch, you can read your latest email updates on here, Um, text messages, you can manage calls, you can sort of answer or end calls on here, but you do still need to actually, you know, talk to your friends with the phone, not with your watch. There are a couple of apps that I thought were pretty cool. Um, One app is called the Find Phone app. What you can do is just tap the little Find Phone widget, you just tap it, and uh, the phone will immediately send an alarm to tell you where it is. Another really cool app that I found on the Google Play App Store um, is to essentially, it's a little thing called V Finder, and it's basically a remote viewfinder. So if your phone is over there, and you want to like, take a self-portrait, I guess, you can just view yourself on the, view, on the watch and take a photo with the application. Now for the pros and cons of the Sony smartwatch. The pros, it's nice and portable, and it's kind of cool looking. It's not as bulky as I thought it would be, and a nice handy clip on the back so you can clip it to your clothes. And I think a few of the apps are kind of cool, like the um, Find Phone feature as well as the uh, remote camera viewfinder. 
Now for the cons. The battery life on this thing is not that great. Uh, Sony says up to four days. That's maybe if you don't use it at all, then maybe it will last up to four days. But if you do use it constantly, you know, every day, you, you look at your watch every day, uh, you used to use the apps all the time, it's easily maybe six hours at best if you use it all the time. If you leave it alone and use it occasionally, it's maybe up to two days. So I think the battery life is not that great. And for a watch, I think the battery life should be much longer than it is. The other thing I don't like is that it has a proprietary charger. On the back behind the clip, there's a little four pin charger there. If you lose the cable, which I've done a couple of times now, uh, it's, you can't charge it and you need this particular cable. Another thing is it's around $150 for an accessory. You can't use it by itself. You, have to, you need an Android smartphone for you to use it. So I don't know if it's worth the $150 for an accessory. One final gripe here is that I think a few of the apps are not fully baked and the interaction is just not really my style. The, the whole pinching thing, such a little small screen to go through the different apps. And uh, for the remote camera viewfinder, you don't tap to take a picture, you slide up to take a picture, which is not very intuitive. Now for a buy, try, or don't buy. I have to say right now, the way the interface is, I have to say it's a don't buy, just because I think the interface needs some serious improvement and the price needs to go down maybe a little bit more for it to be worth it. I'm Nicole Lin, this has been uh, my review of the Sony smartwatch. Thumbs down. You know what's funny about this? It has a clip. It almost looks like they're trying to fool you. Like this is an iPod Nano with a kind of special band, but it, it's as Nicole said, it's not, <laughs> it's not. Uh, all right. Thank you, Nicole Lee. Next, we're going to take a look at uh, something that is very, very odd. This kind of looks like a, a smartphone, except for the little crank in it. Um, it does have the Android buttons at the bottom, and that's because it's a remote control for your Android phone. Jason Howell, Ooh. Jason Howell takes a look. Hey, what's up? I'm Jason Howell, and I'm here with the Motorola Smart Controller. It's a $99.99 device. It's a remote control for your Android device. It actually integrates the standard Android functions that you see at the bottom here, home, back, search, and menu, as well as a volume rocker on the side, screen on, and this big touchpad that you can use to control things if you're in webtop mode. You have to have a device that supports webtop mode like the Motorola Droid Razor Max that I have here. Otherwise, this remote works with any Android phone. The touchpad has a nice solid click to it, though tapping it registers a click too if you just tap on the top. The touchpad, however, is very frustrating to use with a thumb. It's kind of the type of thing that you would want to do if you're holding a remote. You want to control it with a thumb. And your thumbs are just too fat, so when you're trying to narrow in on something and tap it, a lot of times you end up missing it. Two-handed operation is ideal for this, especially for the multi-touch gestures that they build into the device. But no matter what, anything more than your fingertip is going to throw the accuracy off completely. Uh, there's these invisible margins around the touchpad that are very easy to move outside of when you're trying to control it. And you just won't know that you're there other than the fact that your pointer isn't going anywhere. So it's really frustrating. On the back is a little foam button. If you click the button, you can accept an incoming call. If you hold it down, you can actually redial the last call made on your phone. Phone audio quality is fine. You get it through the speaker up here and you have your microphone down there. It's a little tinny, but the convenience is absolutely a nice trade-off to have. All right, so let's take a look at some of the uses of the Motorola Smart Controller. First of all, web browsing. I would say the experience web browsing with this was awful. The inaccuracy of the touchpad absolutely makes for an infuriating experience. Ultimately, it was just way easier to pick up the device and do it there. Also, you can't enter in any text with the device. You'd have to have a separate keyboard. It has voice dictation, voice entry if you hold down the search button, as any Android phone does, but still not ideal in all situations. I did a lot of movie viewing with the device, and I might say that the controller is maybe intended for that a little bit more than it is web browsing. It's still not ideal. The touchpad just isn't accurate enough 
to do the simple things like fast forward and rewind to a particular spot easily. And finally, webtop mode on supported Motorola devices. Uh, I tested it with this, the HD station that Motorola sells, and it gives the controller a little bit more purpose. Uh, you'd still need a keyboard for some sort of text entry as you're using the device. So let's take a look at the pros. You can access your docked phone from across the room. The phone integration on the back is a definite plus, and it works with any Android device capable of the Bluetooth HID profile. Now the cons. It's too expensive for what you get. It's yet another thing to remember to charge at night, and the touchpad inaccuracies kill the device. If you haven't guessed by now, I absolutely recommend that you not buy the Motorola Smart Controller. You can check out my reviews on All About Android at twit.tv slash AAA, and thank you for watching my review of the Motorola Smart Controller. Thank you, Jason. Coming up, I'm going to review a radio that helps you sleep better, and uh, Sarah Lane will be here to explain what the heck this is. But first, let's talk about avoiding the post office. <laughs> Actually, the post office loves Stamps.com. You will, too. Stamps.com lets you basically bring the post office to where you are, whether you're running a business, working from home, selling items online on eBay or Amazon. The last thing you want to do is drag everything over to the post office to buy stamps, to ship things. You could do it all with Stamps.com right here from your desk. Stamps.com, it's so cool. It lets you print official U.S. postage for anything, letters, packages, whatever you're mailing, right from your own computer and your own printer. No special inks needed, no postage meter needed. And that'll save you hundreds of dollars a year alone. Stamps.com. Check it out, Mac or PC. Uh, you even get a USB scale that plugs right in the computer. You plop your package or letter on the scale. It tells you exactly how much it's going to cost. Even prints out the label for you. And if you use QuickBooks, which we do here, and you're doing invoices, it'll add, automatically take your QuickBooks address book, print out the invoices. I mean, this is not only a, a money saver, it's a time saver. Stamps.com. You even get discounts you can't get at the post office. 21%. As much as 21% off express mail, 15% off priority mail. And if you're doing priority mail or international mailing where you have some forms to fill out, stamps.com's software fills the forms out for you. So really, there is nothing easier. I really want you to try this, and that's why we've arranged for a very good no-risk trial offer. Now, normally, it's an $80 no-risk trial offer, but here's the key. Go to stamps.com, and instead of accepting that $80, say, no, I want more, I want more. Click that. There's an icon in the upper right-hand corner. A little rate. There it is, the radio microphone. Enter in the offer code before you buy, and that $80 turns into $110. $55 in postage coupons. The digital scale is free. You just pay shipping and handling. $5 supply kit and a four-week trial, all for shipping and handling alone. It really is a wonderful deal. I highly encourage you to try it. I should mention, somebody, somebody emailed me and said they thought they were going to get like 55 bucks in stamps. You get coupons that you mail in. It's not They don't want you to use it all at once, so you mail it in as you use it over a period of several months. But still, it's $55 free postage, so it's a great deal. Look, you got nothing to lose. Stamps.com. Click the radio microphone. Use the offer code before you buy. I really do think you're going to like it. All right, we got a couple of quickie reviews now for you. These little mini reviews starting off with Jason. Uh, I guess it's Tony, right? Tony, Tony's going to review this. Okay. What are we going to review? This is the Galaxy Player, right? Tony uh, Wang, who normally uh, does cameras for us, is going to take a look at what I think is a pretty good idea. Samsung's response to the iPod Touch. Tony? I'm Tony from Twit, and today I'm reviewing the Samsung Galaxy Player 3.6. So let's take a look at what this player has to offer. The Samsung Galaxy Player 3.6 has single core one gigahertz processor uh, with two megapixel back facing camera, VGA camera in the front. Um, it is designed to do VoIP. Uh, you got a earpiece on top, you got a mic on the bottom. They want you to hold it up to your face and make calls. And um, buy, try, or don't buy, I would say a try. Um, if you don't mind, the low resolution display and the somewhat mediocre camera. Um, this might be the Android alternative for iPod Touch. But um, personally, I would actually recommend you getting the 4.0 or the 5.0 with a better display and a better camera. I'm Tony for Twit, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Player 3.6.
Hey everybody, Sarah Lane from Twit here with a little review of the Whale Tail and accompanying vacuum dock. This is actually, it's, it's all in one uh, for 50 bucks and you've got two little parts here. So you've got the tail and then you've got the vacuum. So how do they work together? Well, so I'm gonna make sure that I go right here in the middle where I could kind of go like off to the side if that was better for me, but I'll go in the middle right here. And I just go nice and flush against the back of the, the tablet and then I press down on the vacuum suction and now ta-da well I don't walk around with the iPad all that often but hey maybe you're taking a lot of photos and you want to get creative fifty dollars yeah you have to decide if that's right for you if that's the kind of money that you want to spend so is the whale tail a buy I say yes for fifty bucks you have a stand you have an extra grip it's cute it looks like a fish and it works really well for twit I'm Sarah Lane for before you buy <laughs> I agree with Sarah. I just we met these guys at uh, Mac World Expo, and I have to say, I I just think people should buy it because it's such a great idea, the 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 whale tail. And they say they're going to do other animal tails eventually too. But this one does just kind of naturally uh, fit your hand. So I'm kind of I'm kind of with Sarah on that one. Our uh, final, by the way, the full reviews of both the Samsung Player and the uh, Orca uh, are available online at our YouTube channel, as are all of our reviews. YouTube.com. Slash twit. Now, I want to review something that's pretty cool. Uh, Sarah's already uh, showed us this on uh, iPad today. Uh, John Slanina has one. I have one at home. Sarah has one at home. This is called the Renew Sleep Clock from Gear 4. Now, the idea is, see that? That's, a, that's an iPhone or an iPad 30-pin connector on there. I'm going to connect my iPhone. One of the nice things, they give you enough room so even though I have a case, I can still connect the iPhone uh, to the connector. There's enough room there. And I could just connect it. Now, first thing that will happen is after I unlock the iPhone is it's going to say, hey, I see a Renew clock on here. Or maybe I'll, have to, I'll run the Renew software. There's a free uh, app. I put it in the clock section here. The Renew app. So let's run that. And what this does is it connects up to the clock and it monitors your sleep. The clock has built into it a very interesting sensor it's, it's basically a, a LiDAR sensor that senses your movements. And as you sleep, it'll monitor your sleep patterns. And I've been doing it for a couple of weeks now, so I'll show you some of my, my sleep stats. This is last night. So uh, the white parts up here are either no reading or you're up or you're you, and, and up or moving around. They can't see you. The blue part is light sleep. And right at the bottom here is deep sleep. And now this is not unusual, but... Uh, I didn't get a lot of deep sleep. I only spent about six hours out of... I was in bed for eight hours, but only about six of them was I actually sleeping. That's pretty typical. I sleep pretty poorly. This is really of use for people who have sleep apnea. Uh, John Slanina has actually done sleep studies because, like many of us, uh, sometimes he, he stops breathing in the middle of the night. And this is the kind of thing they use for these sleep apnea studies. So it'll give you a very interesting take on you know how you're sleeping, how well you're sleeping. Another thing I, I actually really like about this, it's also an alarm clock. So we'll go to sleep, and as you go to sleep, I, it says I haven't set a wake-up time. I'll set it. You see it says not connected. Now, I don't know if that's because I'm not connected or more likely because it can't see anything out front here. It'll show you as it sees movement. It'll show you the movement. A couple of nice things about this. If there are two people in bed, if you have a, you know, you're a couple, it'll monitor the person closest. It's smart enough to not worry about pets. And I really like this alarm clock. So I can slide the time around. I can make it a bigger window. Notice it is a window or a smaller window. The reason for the window is this. The alarm clock will not go off until you are actually uh, in light sleep. So if you're in deep sleep, the alarm clock will delay as long as the window allows. Eventually, you... If you say, I have to get up at 7.30, you can say, well, make sure I'm up by 7.30. You have two alarms on here, and the alarms are great. There's some really nice, pretty alarms. You can choose music from your iPod. You could choose the radio. Yes, this is an AM, FM clock radio. The sound's pretty good. I like the sounds it comes with. Let me see if I can show you this. Uh, there's birds singing. It's a great way to wake up. I can put the microphone a little closer so you can hear it. And it gets louder and, and louder and louder, and pretty soon the birds are, like, taking over your bed. But that's okay. There's waves. You like waves? This makes me want to go to the bathroom, actually. <laughs> but, hey, that's enough. That gets you out of bed. 
So there's a few of those. Uh, I love these alarm clocks. They slowly ramp up. So even though it's only waking you once you're in light sleep, it's really a, an easy, simple way to wake up. Most of the time, I use the I use the early morning bird song. Most of the time when I wake up, I think, oh, the birds sound beautiful. I forget that that's the alarm clock playing bird song. It's just so pretty. Now, I think the phone doesn't think it's docked, so let me try this again. That's that's part of the part of the problem. The other thing I liked about it, when it does dock and I'm having some sort of trouble, maybe, oh, you know what? Maybe it thinks it's docked. To, it, it, I have another Renew clock associated with this. Maybe it's associated with my Renew clock at home. It does set the time from the iPod which is or iPhone, which is really nice. You can choose other devices. You see, um, that's the volume control. You can choose... Uh, by the way, the snooze button works really nicely with the uh, the the, uh, the phone. Um, here I can go into different modes. There's a oh I don't know what's going on here. There's a radio mode, aux mode. There's a little aux jack in the back. There we go. AM and FM radio. I, I think this is actually is a, is a pretty slick little radio. Now here's the pros and cons. The pros. It is a dock that charges your iPhone or iPad. That 30-pin connector will work with either. And this is big enough to hold an iPad. Uh, it also monitors your sleep, and it does so fairly accurately. I mean, I think it's kind of interesting to see how you're sleeping. Uh, so it's a decent alarm clock. These are good enough speakers, so listening uh, to music. Uh, I often use this to listen to books, my audio books. I'll plug it in here and listen to my audible books as I'm going to sleep, and that's kind of nice. Um, the cons are it's $200. It's a little bit pricey, I think. And frankly, after a while, you kind of get the idea. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sleeping so good. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you're supposed to do with this. I'm not sleeping so good. Uh, I wish the clock had helped me sleep better. It doesn't. It just monitors your sleep. Pretty cool technology. I really love it. Uh, you don't have to wear anything. There's no sensor unlike, say, a Fitbit or a Jawbone Up You don't or, or the... The, the Nike uh, Fuel. You don't have to wear the band or wear anything. Uh, it does it, monitors it uh, wirelessly by looking, in effect, looking at you. Uh, but I just think for 200 bucks and kind of limited utility, there are many, many iPod uh, and iPhone and uh, iPad docks out there, uh, which will give you at least as good sound, if not better, uh, for a lot less money, something uh, like one of those iHome devices. So unless you really need the sleep monitoring, and it is cool, I don't deny it, uh, I'm going to have to say Renew is a, I'm sorry, do not buy, just because of the price. Um, you know what? I think we'd like to bring Nicole Lee in. We have a little bit of time left in the show. And Nicole has been reading your emails and responses. And we've never done this before, but I think it would be fun to do it, is to talk back to you a little bit uh, from uh, from our emails. Hi, Nicole. Hello, how are Nicole you? Nicole is the producer of Before You Buy. She's the person who gets all of the products in. Yeah. And uh, I have to thank John Slanina because... Uh, I forgot to bring my uh, Renew clock in for the review today, and he ran home to do it. Ah, now it's now it's seeing me. I don't know why it didn't see me before. Maybe I just didn't have it docked properly. Um, so uh, let's hear some of the questions, the comments, the suggestions from our audience. Sure. Um, the email address to send your feedback to is before you buy at twit.tv. And um, from Daniel, he says, that, Hello, I would like to see you review the Sony Xperia S. And that's the... Um, Android, the latest Android phone from Sony. Right. We and showed it at CES. We had it in right. our little, hot little hands, we but did, it wasn't out did, yet. But it wasn't out yet. And it, right now it's out in, in the international circles. But not the U.S. But not the U.S. And that's kind of why I've been having some trouble getting it because it's international and the U.S. version isn't out yet. So You're really good at getting uh, phones uh, for reviews. Do you go to, who do you go to? The carrier? The manufacturer? I go to both. Okay. Because sometimes the carrier won't have it, but the manufacturer will, and sometimes it's vice versa. So the, lo the Nokia Lumia 900, which is very hard to get. I got it from Nokia. Nokia directly. as opposed to AT&T. Yeah. They didn't have very many, and we were able to get it from Nokia. Yeah, because Nokia has better... This is why we hired content. Nicole. She's got great connections, especially <laughs> in, the, in the cell phone industry. You reviewed cell phone for uh, years, it seems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. As soon as we can get it, Daniel, we will. And the next uh, question from Kashif. I'm not sure Kashif. that's the right... Um, pronunciation. Yeah, um, can you please do a review of the air stash and the Wait air a minute. stash? The air stash is that something you store your marijuana in? <laughs> that, that's not that kind of stash. Um, this is the air stash, and we have it actually. What is that? This is a uh, remote storage thing, so you can stream videos from this to your iPad or your iPhone. Oh, this is kind of like the uh, Seagate uh, GoFlex drive yeah. that we were mm -hmm. to, but it's solid state. It's solid state, the and it's like a USB key. 
Who's going to get to review that? I don't know. How do you decide who gets to review this stuff? Usually people volunteer. Yeah. The Twitch stuff. Volunteer like, like, I'm going to review that. Yeah. There are a lot of volunteers here, (laughs) as you can tell. All right. So I bet you go, we got some volunteers uh, for that. I always get what the others don't. Because you know what? I can see. that's not true. Well, but I I very rarely will pull rank and say, oh, I have to review that. Because I get to see all this stuff anyway. So it's fun for, I love it that our staff gets to uh, participate a little right. bit in fact one of the things leo leo writes from petaluma california <laughs> we'd like to get more of the other twit staff reviewing products what about lisa frederick what about greg and 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 uh, <laughs> and i'd love i'd love to see more of john slanina jammer b reviewing stuff yeah yeah you know i have asked a few of them and some of them are a little camera shy but maybe shy. We'll, we'll, we'll well well you know what we're gonna out. do it's what we did to get alex gumpel to review the lumia <laughs> i said he said i don't know how to review so i said no problem Use it for a while, then sit down across from me. I'll ask you questions, yeah, and you can review idea. it that's to me. Idea. So we'll do that with somebody, yeah. whoever's not too camera shy. Okay. And finally, we have a, a little comment from Sean, and says that he just bought the Samsung Galaxy Note, and it's awesome. He loves it. <laughs> I'm going to get the 64 gig version, and uh, well, hold on of the Wait, Asus Transformer Prime. Yeah, Transformer Prime. And get this: leave Windows and Apple alone for a while. He's just going all Android. Wow, that's all a bold Android. thing to do. Absolutely. Wow, good for him. Yeah, I have to say, I, I, I realize that the Galaxy Note, which, with its giant 5.3-inch screen, isn't for everybody. But you know I'm, I'm singing its praises <laughs> all the time. I really, it's, it's a really great phone. And uh, I always am worried when somebody buys one on my recommendation, because it is big. Like, you probably don't like it, because you're, you're well, small, my hands and your hands can't small. reach around it. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But I think you know, some people, like Sean, obviously, they love it. They love the, I, I, the size. Yeah. Like, uh, Tony Wang loves his note as well. Well, that's who so. t- turned me on to it. Tony. Yeah. yeah. So, as usual, you know, we try to give you uh, the best recommendations we can. That's why we have a buy and do not buy recommendation. But sometimes the right answer is to try because it really depends. And the note is a good example where I'd say buy it. But you do have to try it first because you want to make sure right. it's not too big for you. Um, coming up, with the tease a few products. Yeah, yeah Coming up next week. We have the Galaxy Tab 2. Oh, this just oh, came out. I'm excited. Galaxy Tab 2. Yeah. This is their 7.7-inch uh, tablet. Right there, right running, there. And it's running ice cream sandwich. It's coming up. Yeah. Ice yeah. cream sandwich with a touch whiz, though. So, I mean. With the Samsung touch whiz. Like. You know, I just saw, and I'm really excited uh, to get Jason's review of the uh, HTC right One. You have it there. Well. That's also running ice cream sandwich. And that HTC has One S. the HTC uh, Touch Sense 4 yes. on it. Uh, not touch, sense yeah, four. Yes, sense, sense and four. I have to say, sense is the. I'm, I, I don't mind touch whiz so much. I hate Motorola's blur, but I have always liked HTC's sense, and they really outdid themselves with version four. It they looks really made good. Made up for all the failures. And another in interesting three. HTC phone yeah. is the Titan Two. It, that's a giant one. Look how big so that that's is. That's like compared to the size of this. It's yeah. like it's pretty interesting. That's a four plus inch screen, and it's running Windows Mobile, which is yeah, nice. Windows Phone. Windows phone 7. And this has a sixteen. Oh. Megapixel. Holy cow. Camera. Now, uh, I know the HTC One will be on T-Mobile. What what uh, carrier is this AT&T. for? AT&T. Wow. So AT&T has both the, the Windows phones. Isn't that interesting? The Lumia and the... Yeah, there is a Verizon phone, uh, Windows phone, but they but you have to beg them. Yeah. They won't get it. I guess so. They say, no, we don't know anything <laughs> about that. No, really, I know you. Leo said you have one. Nicole Lee, thank you so much. It's really thank great. You. I love doing this show, and I'm really proud of... Uh, uh, how all of our staff has kind of stepped up and said we're going to review stuff. Uh, many of you, have, many of them, have never uh, done much camera work, so it's really great to have them on. And we're going to get, we'll get, we'll get you guys, we'll get the rest of you on there. Uh, if you want to see any of the reviews uh, in greater depth, uh, you can always go to our YouTube channel, as I mentioned, YouTube.com/slash/twit. We do appreciate the emails byb at twit.tv. Nicole reads them and responds. Obviously, we'll probably do more of this. I like, yes. I kind of like that idea. And uh, before we leave you, let's remind you that you got to watch before you buy. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.